In this video, we're going to look at a graph theory application. In fact, we're going to create a graph to solve this very traditional puzzle called the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage. So this is a very traditional puzzle. It actually first be, uh, appeared in 775 AD in a set called Problems for the Quickening of the Mind by St. Alcuin of York, which is kind of cool. And here's the idea. The farmer has a goat, a wolf, and a cabbage, right? We've got a goat. Our wolf is in red for some reason here, and a cabbage, and he wants to take them all to market, and the market is across the river. But his boat will only hold two items at once, and obviously if he puts the cabbage and the wolf in there, neither is going to be able to paddle, so he can only, he has to be in the boat, and he can only take one object with him. However, if left alone, the goat will eat the cabbage, and the, and the wolf will eat the goat. So he can't leave the wolf and the cabbage alone, and he can't leave the wolf and the goat alone. So this is the puzzle, is how can the farmer get all three of these across the river to market without having any of them eat anybody else. So to use graph theory to solve this, I'm gonna define the vertices in our graph. And I'm gonna start by defining a, a vertex that represents all parties being on the original side of the river. So we're gonna say the fox, the, oh, excuse me, the farmer, the wolf, the cabbage, and the goat are all on the first side of the river and nothing is on the far side. Okay, so that sort of vertical line represents the farmer, or it represents the river. And the letters represent what's on the original side, the left side of the river, and what's on the um, other side of the river. At the moment, nothing. So if the farmer and the cabbage have crossed the river, then we have the farmer and the cabbage on this side of the river, and the wolf and the goat on the original side, and of course that's going to be bad because here the wolf's going to eat our goat. And finally, our end state, the goal, is where nothing is on the original side of the river, and the farmer, the goat, the cabbage, and the wolf are all on the final side of the river. Okay, so these are going to be illustrations of our vertices. This is what each vertex is going to represent as we solve this puzzle. Okay, to solve this, I'm going to draw a graph. Now our starting vertex is where all of the farmer, the wolf, the goat, and the cabbage are all on our original side of the river. And now we have three choices. I'm going to list out every choice. I'm not going to worry about does it violate our rules, you know, is the goat left alone with the cabbage, or is the wolf left alone with the goat. I'm just going to draw out every possible combination. So the farmer can only take one thing across with him. So the farmer could take the goat and leave the wolf and the cabbage, and the farmer could take the goat. Right, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is the farmer could take the wolf, leaving the goat and the cabbage, and the farmer takes the wolf. Like that, so that's an option. Or the farmer could take the cabbage and leave the goat and the wolf. And the farmer takes the cabbage. Right, these are the three things that are possible at this point. And again, I'm just going to list out everything that's possible. So going back to this first state at the top, the farmer is then going to go back across the river. So we're going to have the farmer, the wolf, the cabbage, leaving the goat behind. Here we're going to have, and that's there. And here we're going to have the farmer, the goat, and the cabbage, leaving the wolf behind. And down here, I'm going to have the farmer, the goat, and the wolf leaving the cabbage behind. There. Okay. Now, once again, what can we do? So starting at the top of this middle column, the farmer could take the wolf across, leaving the cabbage, farmer, wolf, goat. That's one thing that could happen. Or the farmer could take the cabbage across, leaving the wolf behind. There, 
both of those are possible. Now, in this, in this second one, the farmer could take the cabbage across. Oh, no, not that one. And, okay, if the farmer takes the, the, the goat across, he's gonna end up in that state. It can be also be thought of sort of as a state diagram. If the farmer decides to take the cabbage across and leave the goat, that state. Now down here looking at this last one, um, the farmer could take the goat across, which would be the same as going there, or the farmer could take the wolf across and be the same as there. I'm trying to stagger this a little bit so it all fits on the screen. Okay, I'm going to start back at the top of our new column now, and what are the choices? Well, the farmer will have to go back for the cabbage. So we'll have the farmer and the cabbage and the wolf and the goat. And here the farmer will go back to greet the wolf, with the cabbage and the goat alone like that. And here the farmer will go back for the goat, leaving the cabbage and the wolf. And then our final state will be that the farmer will come back with the final item. Farmer, goat, cabbage, wolf. Okay, so ignoring rules about who eats who, this is a graph of all our possible moves. So our next step is gonna to be to come back through this graph and mark off any states that will go against our rules. So over here, the goat will eat the cabbage, so that state isn't going to work. Similarly here, the wolf will eat the goat, so that's not going to work. I'm only going to look for the ones that where they're left alone. Here the wolf is left with the goat, here the cabbage is left with the goat, so those states aren't going to work. Now you could erase them, and they'll make it look a little cleaner, but at the moment I'm going to leave them in place. Because it's just, I don't want, um, just for ease of visualization. Okay, so we start here, this is our start. And now our problem has been reduced to, can we find a route, which is called a path, through this graph to get to our end state without going through any of these states that are marked off? Well, the farmer and the goat could go across the river, leaving the wolf and the cabbage behind, and the wolf doesn't eat the cabbage and vice versa. And there's only one thing to do. The farmer can come back, leaving the goat behind. But now we have a couple of choices. So I'm going to randomly choose to take the wolf across. It doesn't matter. You could take either the wolf or the cabbage across. And you're going to end up in either of this state or that state. But from here, from either of those states, notice you would be then going towards the crossed out state. So neither of those states are gonna work, but you're gonna have to go through one of them. So we're gonna pick this one, we're gonna take the wolf across, and then the trick is, is we're gonna bring the goat back. So notice I very intentionally did not make this a directed graph because we can go back or forth. So here, once the farmer has brought the wolf across the river to join the goat, we're then gonna take the goat back with us to the first side of the bridge, then we can take the, the cabbage across because the, the cabbage and the wolf have no problems together. And the farmer can go back, pick up our goat, and then finally take everything across. And so now we have our route. Now we can put arrows so we know our path through our graph. And so what's interesting is this is a little bit of a tricky puzzle if you try to just solve it in your head, it can be a little difficult. But by putting it in, on a graph and doing it with an algorithm, which is really what I've described here, you really eliminate anything tricky. Tricky. It's you just write out every possible way things could go. You can write an algorithm for that. And then you eliminate any states that are, you know, aren't going to work. And then we just have to find a path through it. These are all very simple, straightforward tasks where solving the puzzle directly is difficult. 
So here I've just typed all this up. It's the same thing. First we get rid of the goat being left with the cabbage and the wolf being left with the goat. The, the goat being left with the wolf there and the goat being left with the cabbage. And then we can just, you know, follow this trail. And again, we can go either direction here. I'm gonna stay the same to what we did on the other page. There we go. And there's our route. Now, again, this is a silly puzzle, but the key takeaway is, is that we can take difficult problems and use graph theory to solve them in a very straightforward kind of a way. And that's one of the powerful aspects of graph theory.